Hey guys, this is Mrs. Gebhardt, and I'm going to go through the notes on atomic structure. Alright, so first off we have to talk about atomic structure in terms of what an atom is. Okay, so an atom is going to be something that is uh, that was classified by a man by the name of Democritus right here. And um, it's going to be called um, or, or seen as the smallest unit of matter retaining its identity. Of, of a substance. So we have matter in my hair and these are made up of lots of atoms. This little pen that I'm working with, a um, pair of scissors, okay, all made up of atoms, all different. And, and they could be the same exact atoms, they're just in different formations, but they are made up of atoms, okay. So um, this is what the, we consider to be the smallest unit of matter. All right, so now the atomic structure. Um, when we look at atomic structure, um, we have, and I'm going to kind of go through all these little pieces at one time so I can say it all at once. Um, we have two regions. The first region that we're going to look at is this nucleus, okay? And the nucleus is the center of the atom, um, and it contains the mass of the atom. And I want you to think of a nucleus just like you would think of a nucleus in a cell, okay? So here's the nucleus, and this is this region right in here. It's the center of the atom, most of the mass. Electron cloud surrounds the nucleus. That's a big thing, so make sure you remember that. So here's my electron cloud, and it's this region that surrounds that nucleus. Um, this is going to take up a lot of space because there's going to be a lot of room between this region from my nucleus outward. It's going to be a ton of room. Okay, so it's going to account for most of the space, but it's not going to have um, a, a lot of mass or anything like that. Um, you can think of the nucleus uh, um, in terms of a, a pickup truck. So I want you to think of the biggest pickup truck that you've got. That's your nucleus. The electrons in our nucleus that surround are like if I take that nucleus and uh, that um, truck and I put a feather on the truck. So I've measured the mass of the truck and then I add a feather. It's so microscopic. It's, it's going to maybe register, maybe not. It's still going to add a little bit of mass, but not a ton. All right, so now inside the nucleus, um, we have two of the three subatomic particles. And don't let subatomic particles scare you. They're just referring to these small little particles that make up the whole atom itself, okay? So the two of them that we're gonna deal with are protons, which are positive, protons are positive, and neutrons having no charge at all, okay? In the electrons, we've got the third subatomic particle, and this um, resides outside of the nucleus. So make sure you remember that on a test or a quiz, it's outside of the nucleus. And that is the electron, and it has a negative charge and really has no mass. So think back to my um, pickup truck, truck example. The pickup truck is the nucleus, and then the feather that we just barely makes the, the, mat, the scale move is the electrons. Or the electron cloud, I should say. All right, so how do they interact? So protons and neutrons are compact. Okay, they're living very close together. They, they take up most of that mass. Um, we're going to have a positive charge in that nucleus because I have a proton which is positive and a neutron that has no charge at all, so it's going to really be a positive charge. And then we've got negatively charged electrons. Okay, they have small mass but a large amount of space outside of the nucleus. Okay, so we have negative large amount of space outside the nucleus. Okay, so how do they balance each other out? Protons equal the number of electrons. Okay, so if I've got 20 protons, I've got 20 pluses, and I've got 20 minuses, they're gonna cancel each other out. So my overall charge is gonna be neutral because I've gotten rid of the charges. They, they equal each other out. Neutrons have no charge and therefore not gonna have an effect on the overall charge of the atom. Okay, so now how do we know the number of subatomic particles in an atom? All right, so atomic number is the number that indicates the number of protons in an atom, okay? So hydrogen is one, hydrogen has one proton. Carbon is six, it's gonna have six protons. The number of protons identifies the atom, and this is very, very important. So this number, let me move, sorry, my... Um, move my pen, sorry. Um, that number one right there tells me it's hydrogen. It's specific to hydrogen, the proton number. Um, this six protons tells me it's carbon. If I had any other number, it wouldn't be carbon. So that's, this part right here is very, very, very important, okay, when we think about um, identifying the uh, particular substance. All right, so 
two protons means I'm helium. If I had helium, if I have 29 protons, it's copper. They're specific to that element. All right, so how do we know the number of subatomic particles? Um, mass number is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. And I'm actually, um, we'll, we'll go on to this a little bit more in detail later on. Um, but when we think about uh, mass number, all I want you to know is it's protons and neutron number. Hydrogens are really not so great example because it's only got an atomic number of one. So if I start telling you that there are other numbers, it might seem confusing. Um, but hydrogen has a lot of has uh, different variations of itself. So it's kind of hard to understand with that one. But just believe me when I say one of the variations has two neutrons and one proton. So mass minus uh, atomic number. Okay, equals my number of protons. We're going to do more examples without hydrogen, so hopefully that'll make a little more sense. All right, determining the number of protons and neutrons. So Li is lithium. Lithium has a mass of 7 and an atomic number of 3. So my protons is my atomic number. That's protons. Okay. My neutrons are my mass minus my atomic which is four. And when we do these calculations, take that mass number and always round. Okay, we want a nice whole number. All right, neon, which is NE, has a mass number of 20 and an atomic number of 10. So all I do, protons is the same. This is always my proton number. My neutron number is mass minus my atomic, which in this case would make it 10. All right, so what about electrons? Remember, electrons are equal to protons. So those are the same number. So if I have a mass number of 4 and an atomic number of 2, then my protons are 2, my neutrons are 2, my electrons are 2. Determine the number of subatomic particles in the following. So let's look at this. I have chlorine, and it has a mass number of 35 and an atomic number of 17. So my protons are the same as atomic, which is 17. Remember, protons and electrons are the same exact number. And then neutrons, I take a mass and I subtract it from atomic, which would give me 18. Okay. K, which is potassium, has a mass of 39 and an atomic number of 19. So if we go through that same process, my protons should be 19, my neutrons should be 20, and my electrons should be 19. Alright, so now let's look at this element key, okay? We need to be able to identify these different pieces in order to understand um, where these numbers are coming from. So up at the top, right up here, that is my atomic number, which is the number of protons. It is also proton number being the same as the number of electrons, that, that number will be the same. So for helium, protons are two, electrons are two. Alright, in the middle we've got our element symbol and its element name. And at the bottom, we've got this number, and, and it doesn't always follow this pattern. Sometimes this number here, I've seen it in the corners. Um, it it kind of varies, but to be able to identify it, usually the atomic number is on top and the atomic mass is on bottom. If for some reason it wasn't, always go with the decimal number or a number in parentheses, and that's going to be your atomic mass. So that mass is my protons plus my neutrons. When I do calculations, I want to take that number and I want to, um, I want to take that number and I want to um, uh, round it. Okay. Now let's do some elemental math. Okay, so we're going to calculate these um, for ourselves. Um, so we've got. Um, to change my pen here so I have a pen. We've got silicon which has an atomic number of 14 and it has an atomic mass of 28.086. I want to make that number 28 because if I make it 28 it makes life a lot easier and that's what you're going to do. Proton number is this is my atomic number so it's 14. Remember proton and electron are the same so it will be 14. Neutron is mass minus atomic number, which is 14. All right, let's look at calcium. Okay, and we'll do the same three things here. So calcium has an atomic number of 20 and an atomic mass of 40.08. So remember, we want to make that 40. My proton number is 
20. My electron number is 20. My neutron is 40 minus 20, which is 20. Okay. Um, you're going to get lots of practice in class, so if you're confused, don't worry. You're going to keep practicing it. Just remember, atomic number is the number on the top. It's the number of protons. Atomic mass is usually the decimal number at the bottom. We round that number, and that number is made up of protons plus neutrons. In order to balance the charges out, my proton number is always equal to my electron number. If you have any questions, please ask your teacher, and um, hopefully this will be of help. Thank you.